Hello guys and welcome back. So, first of all, all of the previous videos were like 30 minutes long, which I believe is a little bit too much for just a quick look on how to do things. So, today, in this video, I'll try to do it quite faster. And let's start. The topic for today indeed is uh, how to configure actions and the notifications inside of this Abex. But before the actual actual click things inside the front end, let's try to understand how it works underneath all the front end inside a Zabbix. So first of all, we need to have a host, something from what we will be gathering data. Like uh, currently in our front end, this is the same installation we have a Tomcat host and a Zabbix server local host. Then we need an item item that is actually collecting the data and you can create items in the templates which is the best practice or you can create them directly on the host like create item choose the type choose the key update interval and start collecting the data then you need to create a trigger which again can be created in the template here or in the configuration hosts here to create a trigger Click here, you don't need to write an expression on your own, just click the add button, select, choose the proper host group, host, and just choose one from the existing items. Like this, I usually don't spend time on this, so just click insert. Then there's the proper syntax, so curly brackets, the host, then the item key on which we're creating the trigger, trigger function dot last and uh, look inside a Zabbix documentation for all of the supported trigger functions. I will post the link in the description. And the threshold. So the severity, how important this problem will be to you, some kind of name of the trigger. Okay, even generation. So when when this trigger will turn to the problem state, what must happen for it to go back to the OK? Uh, the, first of all, default expression means when this will be false, then trigger will go back to OK state. If this will be true, trigger will remain in the problem state. Recovery expression allows you to specify different expressions. So let's say if last value equals 0, it will be a problem, but if last value equals 5, it will go to the OK state. Or it might make more sense to do it like higher than two. Then, uh, non, so there will be, trigger will always be in the problem state. These settings might be useful in, uh, this setting might be useful for, let's say, SNMP traps monitoring, when you don't have a recovery trap. First of all, you create an item, you created the trigger, receive the trap that switched to the problem state. It is inside a problem and it will never go back to OK. But you need problem event generation mode specified to multiple, which means that each time when you will receive a new value that will basically match your expression, it will create a new event. And what is event? So we have host, item, trigger, and trigger upon the status changes creates a new event and our actions that are sending notifications or executing remote commands are actually working with these events not with the triggers and event can have four sources which is like this zero event created by a trigger one event created by discovery rule which is uh, this one, configuration discovery, and basically it will mean the service or device is discovered or lost. Uh, event created by active agent registration, that will probably be a separate video about this thing. And three is internal event, which basically means that item trigger or low level discovery rule became supported or not supported. All of these events are stored inside the database and you can actually check them out by accessing Zabbix database. So use Zabbix. There is a table called events. And uh, let's say select count source from events group by source order by count standing 
So right now we have only two types of the events in our database. We have 83 events with a source 3, which is internal event. So the item or trigger went to the not supported state or back. And we have 22 events, which is the triggers with a source 0. And uh, let's select uh, something from events where source equals 0 limit 5 so what do we have here the event id source 0 which means it is a trigger object not re not relevant for now object id it is basically a trigger id so if we would select from the triggers table where trigger id equals one of these copy oops too much then we would get information about actual trigger which fired all of this information can be also seen inside the front end but sometimes sometimes when you have a super large environment and you need to find something from the past or something is unclear you can search for this information in the database then uh, value zero means okay state one means problem state acknowledgement in the front end and nanoseconds and the clock when the event was created. So we have an event. What's next? We need to create an action. Configuration actions, there is a default one which by default is disabled and it's called report problems to Zabbix administrator without any conditions, with an operations to send a message to the user group Zabbix administrators via media all media and sent immediately. Um, let's try to create a new one. So test action. We can add a conditions like if host group is only Zabbix servers and uh, let's say what else, what else, what else? Trigger name like available only if these two conditions will be true, which is seen also here, A and B must be true for the operations to execute, or you can make it OR, or you can make a custom expression if you have multiple conditions. So if these conditions are true, we can then move to the next step, which is operations. And uh, here you can find the default subject and a default message that will be sent for the problem that happened. Operations, add a new one, step 1-1, one, one, step duration 0, that means that the default will be taken, but if you're creating just one single step, it really doesn't matter. Then you can choose from the operation type. Let's pick the send message. Send to the user groups or to the users. You're able to choose based on your front-end configuration. So let's make it user groups, Zabbix admins, send only to which media or absolutely all available. And there is an uh, option to add a condition based on acknowledgement. So this step will execute only if event is not acknowledged or if it is acknowledged. Then the other option is send delayed notifications. Uh, then we need to start with the steps not 1-1 one, one, but let's say 2-2 two, two. so basically you are skipping first step but actually it will kind of still be there and uh, you will see like let's add and now you can see that the message send message to the user group will start only after one hour one hour after the problem happened and this one hour comes from default operation step if we will change this to two hours uh, there's no option to update but that's that's true it comes from here um, what else uh, ah, there we go it updated so now it's it says two hours this is useful for like let's say the problem happened but you don't want to send an action immediately notification you want to wait some time maybe the problem will fix itself so if the problem will happen and it will be closed the trigger will go back to okay state and it will generate a new okay event then if it will take less than two hours then nobody will receive a notifications the next step is remote commands let's make it 3-3 step duration default remote commands then you need to choose the target target can be a current host where the problem happened a host some other one or all the host group let's make it a current host 
Then you need to choose IPMI, so it can be an IPMI command, a custom script, SSH, using a password or a public key authentication and just execute uh, some command like systemctl restart uh, Apache, Telnet, or a global script from your front end. So let's say it is SSH, some password, port. If you don't type everything, it will be a default one. And click Add. So the problem happens, trigger goes to the problem state. If it is not resolved in two hours, a message is sent to the Zabbix administrators via all the media. If the problem is not resolved four hours since it started, then also the remote command is executed. And usually, well, this should be a step one and this should be a step two. So first of all, we're trying to fix the problem automatically. If we have a trigger fire that the service is not running, then try uh, to start or restart it automatically. Wait like 10 or 15 minutes. If it didn't help, so the trigger is still in the problem state because we're still receiving a value that service is not running, only then send the message to our administrators. Always try to solve the problems automatically before actually notifying your admins. And then, so we're done with this. Uh, recovery operations. It is possible, it's optional, it's not required. You can send additional email or SMS message on a mobile phone or, or Skype or whatever else that the problem is resolved. If you don't want it, then just skip this step. And the same stuff about the acknowledgement. So if you want to send a notifications that the problem happened, our conditions from the first tab are met. So the problem happened on a host, which is inside a host group Zabbix servers, and the trigger name is like available, which basically is a regular expression. And somebody acknowledged the problem with a message like, I'm working on it. We can send an email to the specified host groups, uh, user groups, sorry, or just the specific users with actual acknowledgement message. So maybe your manager is sitting home, he ha he's on a vacation, he receives a message that your main server is down. After five minutes, he receives a message that, yes, main server is down, but our uh, admin acknowledged the problem that he is working on it and he already knows what the problem is so it should be up in a five minutes then in a five minutes he receives a new email with a message that the problem is resolved and server is up and running again done this would be the action step incorrect custom expression for custom expression this one Okay, so we have an action it is enabled, but there are also a few other things that you need to do First of all, administration, media types. There are three default ones, email, Jabber, and SMS. If we're talking about email, you have to fill these settings. These are absolutely generic uh, SMTP stuff. So based on which email you will be using to send, an e uh, which email server you will be using to send an email outside of the Zabbix, uh, based on the configuration, if you're not aware, then ask the admins that is responsible for your email server and he will definitely give you these settings. If you wanna use some public email like a Gmail or something else, you can also find this information in the Google. So this must be set up properly. And then one of the last things, the user media. We added in the actions that we Zabbix administrators want to receive an email when this happens, these conditions. We won't receive them simply because we didn't specify the media under our user. So click on the admin, click on the media. You see, we don't have anything and we need to add our media, which again will be email because we're talking about the emails, uh, then when active. So we might specify that one email we want to receive this only in a working days in a working time. And about all of the severities of the triggers. And uh, for the other one, we might want to receive this in the weekends and let's say only starting from 12 till something around 18 and only about high or disaster problems so we can see this we can update and based on our actions 
where we have specified that we want to send to the Zabbix administrators to all of the media, it will choose the available one based on the time when the problem actually happened. If it will be Sunday, you will receive an email on uh, this one. The second one, if it will be a working day and a working time, then you will receive email on this one. Done. And the last step, the most important where users usually make mistakes, the user which you configure to receive a notifications must have at least read permissions on the host group where the problem will be happening. So if I created an action, the test action, that is based on the host group Zabbix servers, then my Zabbix administrator users from this Zabbix administrators group must have at least read permissions on the Zab on the uh, affected host group. So read include subgroups. That's for the nesting. Add read update done. Make sure that the user has permissions. Otherwise, he will simply not receive anything. There will be no errors in the Zabbix server log file or anything like that. There will be just blank screen. And when the problem happened, you can verify it in the reports and the action log. You will actually see the event that happened, when it happened, what happened, what was the problem. And there will be also a list of all of the configured actions. And you will see a green mark here if the message was message or remote command was executed successfully and the red cross if it failed if you see a red cross click on it and you will see the actual error message what was the problem why zabbix was not able to deliver the notification fix the problem and then it should work so that's about it for today hopefully we went faster than in the previous videos again post your questions uh, in the comments Probably because of rush, I've missed some of the some of the things that that I could and should tell you more about. But uh, yeah, definitely questions in the comments and uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Uh, I will be just big thanks for my from my side for your subscriptions. Thank you and have a good one.